Up until a year and a half ago, my life revolved around the elegant and grueling sport of gymnastics. I remember my parents thought it might curb my incessant climbing on chairs and cabinets and really whatever I could find, you know, give me an outlet for that energy. But I think it just encouraged more and improved my form, of course. Anyways, it was the first thing I really invested myself in. As a competitive gymnast, training a grand total of 20 hours per week, year-round, there is no easy way to explain how much of my personal identity came from my sport. It gave me my best friends, taught me responsibility, the importance of a fine eye for detail, self-discipline, and extreme determination. At times, it even felt that I was more accustomed to the harsh yet passionate Slovakian accent of my coach than I was to the voice of my own sister. And having hands covered in blisters and calluses not only felt okay, it felt normal. Do not get me wrong, no matter how physic physically and mentally taxing the sport is, nothing surpasses my love for it. My love of mastering new skills, performing, and pushing myself to the limits. As long as I can remember, the goal had always been to secure a scholarship as a collegiate athlete. And over the past year and a half, I've had to let that dream die. I had to deal with a hip disorder that would keep me from doing gymnastics ever again. So, at a year ago, with one periacetabular osteotomy for hip dysplasia later, and with another surgery on the way, my body just could not withstand the impact of gymnastics anymore. Having a goal and a dream that has been years in the making, being pulled out from under you, well, it feels as if every last inch of certainty is sucked out of you. As if the world has stripped you of security. That beautifully crafted train track of your life has derailed. I remember feeling like I could not, or didn't even want to, get out of the bed in the morning thinking that I wasn't Jolie the gymnast. This was my dark pit, if you will. Nothing felt familiar down there. I felt like I didn't know who I was. The amount of actual blood, sweat, and tears that I put into being a successful athlete seemed like it had amounted to nothing. The endless rolls of athletic tape and those leotards I had begged my parents for? Was it worth all those school dances and sleepovers that I had pushed to the side because I had practice or I had a competition? Was it worth pushing people away because I knew that if I had practiced five days a week and with schoolwork on top of that, well, I'd never really have the time to dedicate to being a good friend. And then there was the pain of having to leave my teammates, who, while they were friends who had been predetermined for me because of the sheer amount of time we spent together, were more of a family than I can begin to describe. And on top of that, in this dark pit, I couldn't help ignoring the fact that if gym fees were about $550 a month and I'd been a part of a competitive team for 10 years, not even taking into account extra costs, competition fees, routines, and equipment, that is about $66,000 that I could have saved my family. 
So yeah, there was guilt down in that chaos of that pit too. I just spent so much time on that image of me. The last thing I wanted to do was to have to start new and redefine myself. And I hated thinking about it, and I couldn't help feeling that. After being in a sport that, at the core, judges based on your abilities, that I was letting people down for not being able to follow through with my goal. That I was disappointing. Disappointing my parents, who had supported my gymnastics endeavors since the very get-go. Disappointing my coaches that put so much into helping me become a better athlete. Disappointing my friends and peers who knew me by my sport. Disappointing those who would often strike up a conversation with me by asking how gymnastics was going. And afraid that those conversations would be cut short. Hey Joe, how's gymnastics going? And even though it's jokingly, will I be seeing you in Rio 2016? Actually, I'm going to have to stop gymnastics because my hip is acting up. Oh, I see. So yeah, I was afraid that I would be disappointing the world that I had known up until then. At this point, more than ever, I needed a constant, something to help climb out of that dark place. All throughout my life, I've heard people offer prayers for others and comfort those in certain situations. It's almost something that comes to seem routine, just expected. But now, I was suddenly finding myself at the center of these prayers and concerns, and well, it's just, it's different when that's what you need. It changed my whole perspective of reaching out to others and others reaching out to me, because at that moment, I felt like I could actually believe those prayers. I really needed to know that I wasn't alone in this journey, that while I was in this pit of self-doubt and confusion, that God was right there with me. And there God was, projecting his love through the love I received from this congregation. And that became the first rungs of the ladder to climb out, to make sense of it all. Hearing that people out there actually cared about my health and assured me that this was just part of the journey. And even just having the routine of coming here each week to be greeted openly and warmly. That means more than I know how to express. And it doesn't stop there. Just having people ask me things other than the standard, so how's gymnastics. To come face to face with the fact that people care more about me than just one label, one sport, one aspect of who I am. I think that maybe this church and God have always seen me as more than just one sport. But now I started to understand that I wasn't defined by just one label, one activity that I happened to excel at. I was loved because I was Jolie, not because I was Jolie the gymnast. God's love doesn't stop at your resume. One of my favorite Game of Thrones quotes goes, chaos isn't a pit, chaos is a ladder. And God's love, projected through the love of this congregation, has been my ladder out of the pit amongst the chaos of not knowing what I stood for, seeing and feeling and accepting that love. And it is true that I wouldn't have begun to understand this love that is rooted and grounded here without the chaos. It gives you perspective. So yeah, chaos can be a ladder. You just have to let the love in. 
As for where I am now, I can certainly say that I feel that I have come a long way over the last couple of years. But being honest, I know that I still have conflict in me. It comes especially at times when I am reminded of the question, what if? Seeing teammates that have successful gymnastics careers, quite literally claiming national titles and being recruited by top schools, and making me wonder, what if? What if that could have been me? What if I wasn't the one who had to quit and give up my dream? And facing my own college application process, that hasn't been easy either. I mean, not having the safety of having a top-notch university literally come search for me as an athlete meant that I had to completely change how I was approaching this process. There's a whole list of schools that I had to scratch off right away because at the end of the day, they did want Jolie the athlete and not Jolie the person as a whole. That hurts. That there are opportunities closed off now that I don't do gymnastics. That I am somehow less attractive of a student without the sport. But then again, I do have to consider it a gift that wherever I do end up, I'll be end up there because they do see me for all that I am, want me for all that I have to offer, as God loves me for all that I am. I'm still on my way up this ladder, climbing out from that pit that makes my, spin, my head spin from here and there. But I'm comforted to have my faith in this congregation, week in and week out, to be rooted and grounded with God here, to know that God loves me and each one of us for the depth of who we are.